So today we are out to look at bitterroot. Really amazing flamboyant flower. I wasn't planning to film this one, but it only blooms for two or three days and I heard that they were out. So uh, I just ran out here, I actually came out last night and they only bloom in the middle of the day from like mid morning to mid afternoon. I came out in mid afternoon and they'd already started to close up. So I had to come back today to really fully capture the glory of these amazing flowers. They're much loved uh, because of these exceptional flowers. They have like 15 long petals that are deep purple to white uh, and all shades in between. They're in the Portulacaceae family, <clears throat> the purslane family, which is the same family as Spring Beauty and uh, Miner's Lettuce. And they, uh, I mentioned how they only bloom for two or three days. Each flower only blooms for two or three days. The whole plant might bloom for a little bit longer. Um, and then as soon as they bloom, they wither and disappear and they're gone all summer. And it seems like they have a very fleeting uh, ephemeral cycle, but in fact, they actually have a lot more going on than that. So they have a long summer dormancy. They live in this dry, rocky area, uh, no summer rain. So they have to just sort of wait it out and they disappear for the summer. But then when the first rains of fall start, usually in October, they begin to produce leaves. And then about a month later in say November, they begin to produce a little flower bud and then they stop. And they cover it up in snow in the winter time and then they just wait it out. And then in April, the leaves continue getting longer and form these beautiful rosettes of dark green leaves. They are characteristically succulent and round and needle shaped. Um, and, um, and then those leaves last for three or four weeks and then they wither and disappear. And then these flowers just seem to pop out of nowhere in May. And uh, so they actually are doing a lot more over the course of the year than just the two or three days that you see the flowers. They're here for a much longer period of time. Because of this rocky extreme habitat that they're in and the long summer drought that they go through, they put all of their energy resources into a long taproot that's up to a foot long, which is quite long for a, a little plant like this. And that taproot is harvested and highly valued by native peoples. Uh, it's the characteristic food plant of the Columbia Plateau here in Northwestern United States. And they, the Native Americans would gather every spring. This was kind of symbolic of spring. These roots came out in great numbers. They were one of the first ones that were available. And they would gather in uh, big family groups and large gatherings for a couple weeks at a time and harvest incredible numbers of these roots. They want to harvest roots when they're in that beautiful little rosette of dark green leaves. And the larger the rosette of leaves, it means the bigger the root. And that's the time to harvest them because once the leaves wither and then the flower comes out, all the flowers look the same, whether it's a tiny little root or a big root. So the time to harvest them is when the leaves are out. And also that's the time when they're not bitter or the bitterness is sub subdued. And by harvesting them then, that's also the easiest time to process them. There's many ways to process them. This is a mainstay of uh, foods. They would often mix it with salmon eggs and Saskatoon berries. It makes kind of like a pudding or jelly-like substance when you cook these roots down. Um, they're rich in starch and very low in the fibers that would make them hard to digest. Bitter root was named by Lewis and Clark they were the first white people to discover this plant in Montana. So it's named Lewisia after Lewis and Clark. And then the scientific, the species name is Rediv, Rediviva, which means to spring back to life, to restore back to life, because these original specimens that Lewis and Clark collected and pressed and dried in their museum specimens, um, a couple years later, someone noticed that they actually looked like they saw life in them. So they took them and planted them and they came back to life. So they thought that was amazing and they called this plant Rediviva for coming back to life. These flowers are so beautiful and I hope you have a chance to see them.